Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on using the sine rule and the cosine rule within a single triangle. Now I'm going to presume that you already know how to use the sine rule and how to use the cosine rule and if you don't please look at my videos on that first. Now we've got a triangle here and we want to try and find the length x. We've got all three sides involved and we've got an angle involved and previously I said if you have three sides involved and an angle involved then we can probably use the cosine rule. So if I just write out the cosine rule remember it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a and that's if you had a triangle where your three sides are a, b and c and each of their opposite angles, so the angle opposite to the side A is capital A, the angle opposite the B is B, and the angle opposite the C is capital C. Now the problem is, is that if you substitute these lengths into here in the angle, you end up with X in two different places, because look, that's the angle capital A there, which means that would be the side little a, and then this would be like B and C. So let's say the X was the B in here, you would have an X squared here, and you would have an X term here as well. And you'd end up with a quadratic equation, and you can actually solve it like that, and you have to use a quadratic formula to solve that quadratic equation, but it's not the best way of doing it. Now what I would actually do is to use the sine rule first. So if I give you the sine rule, and do you remember the, the kind of flipped sine rule for finding unknown angles? It was sine of A over little a equals sine of capital B over little b. So that's basically saying that if you do sine of a particular angle and you divide it by the length of the opposite side, that's always going to be the same. So we can use that here. Look, we've got a side and its opposite angle. And then we can't do this side with this opposite angle because we don't know that length and we don't know that angle. But we do have this side here and you could use that side with this unknown opposite angle. So let's just call that angle, I don't know, theta, the Greek letter theta. And then let's just use the sine rule. So if we do sine of a particular angle, so sine of theta divided by its opposite length, so 5, that gives you sine of the other angle, which is 53, divided by its opposite length, which is 10. So look, the only unknown here is theta. Uh, so what we do is we multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of that 5. So we get sine of theta is times that by 5, 5 sine 53 over 10. And then to get rid of that sine in front of the theta, you just do inverse sine of this. So if I do inverse sine of that, I get 23.5, so inverse sine of 5 sine 53 equals 23.5355. I'm not going to round too much because I don't want to have any rounding errors. Don't round until the very end. So if I put that angle in here, this angle is 23.5355. Because I know this angle and this angle, I can easily find this remaining angle here. So I just need to do 180 minus the 53, minus my answer here, and that will give me the remaining angle. So that gives you 103.4645 degrees. So that's our angle here now. Let me write that in, 103.4645. So we've got quite a lot of information now, but the point is, having used the sine rule, we can now use the cosine rule, because look, we've got all three sides involved, and an angle, and the unknown side is opposite the known angle. So basically you should use the cosine rule if you've got all three sides involved and an angle, and the side that we don't know is opposite the known angle. So let's label everything now according to the cosine rule. So the only angle involved in the cosine rule is a capital A, which is gonna be this angle here, the capital A, which means the opposite side will be little a, and then the other two sides just B and C in either order. So let's just substitute this into the cosine rule. So using the cosine rule, we get A squared, which is X squared, is equal to B squared, which is 10 squared, plus C squared, which is 5 squared, minus 2 times B times C times cos of the angle, which was 103.4645. And now it's quite easy now because I can just type this whole thing into my calculator. So if I do that, that gives you x squared is equal to 148.284. And then if you just square root both sides, 
to get rid of that squared, we get a length x of 12 point, and it's to one decimal place, so 0.2 centimeters, so that's a unit, and that is the final answer. So just to summarize, if you've got all three sides involved and an angle, but the unknown side is not opposite the known angle, then use the sine rule first to work out the angle opposite your other known side, do 180 minus those two angles to find the remaining angle, and then use cosine rule to work out what x is.